Hey guys, uh, welcome to adding brand info to products in Shopify. Um, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, etc, etc. Okay, let's get on with this. What are we trying to do? So I'm going to show you on a website that we recently helped develop and uh, Global Crafts wholesale website. Global Crafts B2B. And if you're interested in drop shipping, Global Crafts do drop ship through drop shipping by Global Crafts. Let's have a look at one of their products. Anyone will do. Um, so if I go into one of their products, you can see here that they've got this piece here, which is Meet the Maker in their case. And in their case, they're they're producing handmade products and they want to introduce you to the person who made the product or the group that made the product. This could be, and you reinterpret this into, it could be your different brands on your website or pieces of information that basically you want to put onto multiple product pages, but you only want to edit them in one place. You don't want to keep, you want the data held centrally so that it's just dumped onto the product page. Okay, so let's do this and let's do it with a basically a meet the maker a concept like this uh, on our coffee site. Okay, so let's go back over to our coffee site. Couple, couple, let's have a look at that site just to remind you what it looks like. So this is our coffee site, just green beans. And we've got a couple of different categories of products here. We've got a um, coffee type of product which uses one template. And then if you remember early on when we showed you how to use multiple templates, we made our mugs and we used a different template so that we didn't have the um, shipping for raw green beans included on the template. Okay, before you can start to think about doing this, um, you need to do a couple of things first. So let's go over to our product in here let's go to our in our theme and again we're using the turbo theme by out of the sandbox in our theme let's make sure then products that we have got show a vendor as checked okay so that the vendor and in this case the vendor is called just called ethiopia um obviously it's not a real vendor that's a country but you get the gist um and then let's go and let's create make sure that we've got some collections products collections for the vendors or the vendor information and for my mugs are all made by this producer group called Encantada and I'm going to be showing you that one particular coffee is um, from what we're calling a vendor called Ethiopia so if we go into one of these categories let's go into Encantada you can see that I've put a collection image here in the description uh, along with text, but I've also put the same collection image here. If you're wondering how I made these round collection, round images, well, that's really pretty simple. I use a tool called IM Batch, um, and it batch processes images, uh, and I can make a whole folder of images round in one, one go. Maybe I'll do a little video on that one day. Okay, so we've got our collection set up. What's critical here is that it's product vendor is equal to the the group name or the brand name or whatever you have you're doing it and down here under edit website this thing called handle just make sure that this handle is the same okay okay so we've got that we've got the two two demo collections that we're going to work with here uh, so now we're going to go in and we we'll edit the uh, product template I'm going to start off with the mugs now remember on a previous video here, we showed you how to set up different templates of our mugs, uh, which are the Encantada brand and our green bean coffee, which would be everything else from different templates. Um, so let's go into our online store. Let's click edit template or edit code. And we'll find our mug uh, product template first. So we'll, let's have a look down here in our, it's going to be in our sections and it's going to be product template gifts. That's the one that we created in the earlier use creating multiple templates. So let's go to our product template gifts. So we're going to find somewhere that we want this code to go. So it's going to be somewhere down the bottom. It's going to be above related products, above reviews. Uh, that's where our description is. Um, we've got collections up there, social buttons. Oh, that's where we, so this is where we put, we hard coded that message. Let's go here and have a 
get rid of that. That's the wrong website. Go ahead. So we hard coded this message here into the template. So I think I want my information to pop up just above this line here. Okay. So let's go back to my code. <coughs> hey, yep, this is it, isn't it? Um, that's the wrong one. I've got two going on. Product template GIFs. Okay. And this is the code where that is. So I have already written the code and I'm going to, I'll be giving you the code by uh, putting a, either a link to it or directly pasting it into the description of this uh, video. I'm going to paste it in there. Okay. It's a bit of a, it's a bit of quite, it's quite a long code. I'm just going to sort of talk you through it. So it starts here. If the, uh, if we've got the settings to display vendor, then let's do a basically a loop and build a counter of how many vendors there are. Um, we're going to capture the collection handle uh, of uh, the current collection that we're in, and we're going to we're going to give it the name of the product vendor. And we're going to assign it. We're going to strip it of any HTML or anything like that. Just clean it up, and then for the collections in the collections. Also, in other words, for all the collections on our Shopify site, we're going to go through here and we're going to do a match. And then we're going to build out some variables, variables containing the product image, the producer description, and a true or false sign. So we should end up with one image, one description, and a true for the one where the image, the collection handle stripped equals the actual collection handle that we're in. Okay. If it's a match, then we're going to print out Basically, the collection handle. We're going to do the collections. The yeah, the link. We're going to do a link here to the collections using that collection handle stripped. Um, we're going to put the image in there from the collection, um, and and then we're going to meet the maker. So that's a link, and then we're going to do the meet the maker. So this is the image with a link, so you can click on the image behind it and this is the actual text to meet the maker and then the description from the collection gets put in here truncated to 25 words in case it's too long and it's built into a built into a table and then if we don't have a collection for it we're just going to have a general link to uh, anything made by that vendor so it's more from this maker link to the vendor but obviously in this case it is going to meet the for condition. Okay, don't worry too much about the tech. This I'm going to give you this code to read, look through, and read and study it. Um, so let's just save that and see if it works. Okay, so let's go over to Green Beans, the flared coffee. So this is going to work on the coffee template, and we are hoping that it's going to pop up. There we go. Perfect. So this is the image, and this is the text. Now the key thing about this is that if I have 50 different types of mugs or 50 types of products from this Encantado vendor and this image changes, I don't have to go to every product to change it. All I have to do is go to my Encantado collection, which is not that one. I would go to my Encantado collection here and I would change it here. So if I, just to prove my point, if I put in a test here and save it, and we go back to our, so this is the collection and Cantata, and go back to our coffee cup product page and press F5. Well, it's going to take a minute to refresh because it's doing a lot of caching here. I might actually have to load it. Well, why don't we just load up a different mug that hasn't been cached? There we go. Test is there. So it's not using the cache. Okay, there we go. It is it has changed because I've changed it in the collection. And if I click on the read more or I click on the image, it's going to go back to the full, the collection page basically. And I haven't bothered setting this up or any in any pretty way yet, but there's the collection page. Now, just to show prove a point, we said that in our coffee. Our green beans, we'll be using a different template. We have not edited that template. Therefore, there is no uh, producer or brand information in there yet. If I wanted to do that, I would just have to simply go back to instead of, let's go here, let's get rid of that one. I'm going to do this. Instead of having the product uh, template dash gifts, I'd go to my standard product template and I'd find 
that piece of code, which again, I'd want to put it above the shipping information that we built into the template in an earlier lesson. Do a paste there, the same code, save. And now if I do F5 here, this will refresh and it will have that producer information in there. And it may not be exactly how we want it to look at this point. I would definitely want to put a HR above that. Let's just do that, just to demo it. Um, if section vendor there, let's go here. And let's just put a HR in there just to give it a nice clear line. HR is a horizontal rule in um, HTML. And that should put a line in there above it. And I'm not suggesting that's exactly how I'd want it, but I'm trying to demonstrate the point that we can take this information from the collection. You can see this is different. This is the meet the maker. The Ethiopia's got different data in it versus the data for the mugs because they're linked through different vendors to different collections. Okay, hope that makes sense. Don't forget to uh, like the video, um, subscribe to the YouTube channel, tell your friends. Thanks.